Okay. Hi, my name is Rachel Bolton. I am a professional print and multimedia journalist. Um, and I'm also a candidate uh, in the uh, Department of Media and Communications doing my professional doctorate. Um, and um, basically, this project started when I was on social media. Um, how many people in here have ever read a story on one of their social feeds that was shared by one of their friends or acquaintances that they believe to be fake? Has anyone ever come across fake news on their own social profiles? It's everywhere, right? Um, so a few weeks ago, I was yet again reading a story that someone had posted, um, this time saying that basically the cervical cancer vaccine was mysteriously damaging women, although without any details as to how. Um, and it was actually getting support from other people saying like, well, I'm, I'm pro-vaccination, but now I won't be vaccinating my kids with this one because this one's clearly bad. And the article had no sources. It had a lot of hearsay like, oh, um, my friend's friend's daughter had a reaction and now she's in hospital and all the doctors know that the, the vaccination was to, the, to blame. And I'm a journalist, so you know you can trust me. And a lot of people were really buying into this. And I kind of just reached the end of it. I th said, I'm sick of this. Someone has to do something positive to try and counteract this incredibly negative culture. So the problem is that we've got a situation now where the social media channels have changed how media product is distributed. So users have become publishers, which means that rather than having a publisher who was legally um, responsible for anything that was false, users can now just share stuff immediately. It can go to a lot of different places. It can gain legitimate media coverage, uh, which legitimizes in turn the fake news. And we've got this situation we have now with a massive growth in fake news content. This project is called Be The Filter. The idea is to create an everyday social media campaign for the everyday social media user um, that helps to educate those people about what good information looks like. So it's a what we call social activism or social, yeah, I think, it, is that what we decided it was called? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's <laughs> sure, it's, it's not designed to be combative. We're not trying to make people feel stupid. We're not trying to push any agenda or any political point of view. The entire idea is to create meme type content that will be shareable and that everyday users can, when their friends share this crappy fake news, they can say, hey, this doesn't have any sources. And you can share this image and you can say, this is what a source is. This is why a source is important. This is what a reliable source should look like. Um, and that would also extend to things like news and research, where people might say, oh, well, there's this research project that's come out and it proves that bananas give you cancer. And you're like, well, you interviewed five cancer patients in a cancer ward and asked them if they ate a banana. That does not prove the bananas give people cancer. If it was 100,000 random people and it had some statistic, that might be relevant. So we want to give like these short, simple, but not patronizing um, messages that people can share on their social media and help combat the fake news problem. Um, the resources that we can provide, um, I have been discuss, uh, in conversation with the Walkley Foundation, which is um, the foundation that supports ethical journalism in Australia. Um, it's part of the Media and Communications Union. Um, and they have agreed to provide us with background information on the kinds of ethics that we should be promoting. Um, so we've got a list of 12 with some kind of background that we can give you um, to give you a place to start. Um, we also have a lot of information provided by um, the university in the MECO department, um, the ethics unit, to give you some more background about the kinds of ideas that we'd like to promote. Um, what we're looking for is digestible, engaging content. It could be photo memes, it could be short videos, it could be music. I honestly 
don't care how it, what it is. If you think it would work, I want to hear it. Um, I am happy. We currently have a Facebook page um, that has a very small following. Um, but I am happy to expand this across literally any social media platform that you know of, want to use. That's available to you. I want just to know why. We need a good justification for why we're going to use it. And also, um, as the previous um, people said, I want to know what tone we're going to use on what platform. Like, I'm fine with having a different tone for a different platform. I just want your strategic plans to really think about that. Like, what are we going to do? Why are we going to do it? How are we going to get that across? Um, I would also like the three-month strategic plan and some examples of the type of content that we could produce. Um, I would also love if you could get an, some in there somewhere um, how we could make this into a potentially viral campaign. So the types of people we might approach to see if we could get them to help share our content. Um, keep the message simple, but don't be condescending. That's really important. I, like, I would like a 10-year-old to be able to read a meme and understand that concept, but at the same time, I don't want it to be making them feel like, oh, you think I'm an idiot. Um, don't be political. It's not about um, whether you're right wing, left wing, doesn't matter. Everybody should be concerned about this. Um, and don't forget to include the hashtag, um, which is be the filter, and that's the name of the campaign. Um, yeah, and you can contact your tutor and they will contact me um, if you have any questions. And I'm happy to take questions now as well. What's yeah? Page? It's called Be the Filter. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so it seems, Rachel, that this is very much at the beginning yes. of the social media campaign life of this, of this, of this hashtag, of this movement. Um, so Jenna and Jackie before saying that they, they can work in together. So you've got the con and then you've got the, the, the major, the master brand, I think. Yeah. The, the master brand. Oh. I love that brand. <laughs> I'm very happy happy to have multiple, like if you have ideas for places, people that might want to get involved and like, you know, have those kinds of interactions with it, that's fabulous. Like journalists? Um, yeah, so the idea is like we've talked to the Walkley Foundation. Um, they've agreed to support the campaign. Again, we're going to have the final five, um, potentially like everybody in the final five, if it was all great, I would be happy to take bits and pieces from everybody. Um, we're not really about like getting one particular outcome. We just want to try everything. Like let's be really creative with it. Um, the Walkley Foundation have agreed to kind of retweet us, um, share our content on Facebook. They have an enormous bank of very well followed journalists who follow them um, and hopefully I know through my own personal experience with them, if they retweet you, you will get follows, you will get other journalists liking your stuff, retweeting your stuff, um, which would be a great way to kind of start the snowball roll rolling. But I don't want to sti like stick with the journalists or stick with the media either, because this is not an issue that specifically, while it involves journalists, it actually isn't about journalists, it's about regular users. Um, and most journalists should know these things already. Um, the people we want to, we want to create critical thinkers out of the general public.